In this series, I'm going to show you how to make a platform that looks something like this. So you can see there's ceiling detection and we can move around and we can collect coins. And if we get hit by a spike, we die. And if we get to the end of the level, we get transported to the next one. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is make a player. So I'm going to take this default cat right here and rename it to player. And I'm going to click on the costumes tab. And I'm going to select the cat and delete it. And the second costume also. And for the player, I'm going to select the rectangle tool. Set the fill to a green color. And draw this right in the middle of the screen. I can hold down shift and alt and drag out to make it equal. And I'm going to select the cube and center it right in the middle. Okay, let's start creating our variables. So I'm going to delete this variable right here and make a variable. I'm going to call it scroll x and another one called scroll y and two more called x for this sprite only and one more called y for this sprite only. And we also need a level. And I'm going to hide all these. We won't be needing to see those. So I'm going to go to the events tab when green flag clicked. Then we want to make a block and I'm going to call this restart. And now let's define this restart block. So I'm going to set X to zero and set Y to zero. And I'm going to go to the events tab and broadcast play game when the green flag is clicked. And when I receive play game, we want to set leveled to one forever. And I'm going to drag out this restart block right here and put it right under the play game. So inside of this forever loop, we're going to do all the code we need to move. So I'm going to make a block called update. Press OK. And I'm going to drag this inside this forever loop right here. And I'm going to drag out go to x0. Go to operators, drag out the minus symbol and put them into both of these slots. And then I'm going to drag out the variables X and Y into the first slot. And into the second ones, I'm going to drag in scroll X and scroll Y. And let's go to control. If then. And if key depressed, so we're going to use the WASD keys to control the character. Then we want to change X by negative 8. And... I'm going to right click, press duplicate, and put this below here. And if key A pressed, then change X by 8. So let's press the play button, the green flag. When I press the A and D keys, the player moves. Let me just reverse this right here. So key D pressed is 8, and key A pressed is negative 8. Okay. Let me make the player a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go back into the costumes tab and shrink this and we need to make a ground sprite for our game now so I'm gonna press choose a sprite and press paint and I'm gonna call this ground and for now I'm just gonna select the square tool and set this color to a bluish color and I'm going to draw a big square on the floor right here and I'm going to reset the position x to 0 and y to 0. So it's right there at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to rename this to level 1 dash 1. So let's first set up our variables. We only need two for the sprite only x and for the sprite only y. So what we need to do here is very simple. When I receive play game forever, go to and drag out minus and minus right here. 
So x minus scroll x and y minus scroll y. So nothing should happen here. That's because we're not setting the scroll y variable. So if I go back into my player and drag out set scroll x to x, then you can see when I press the arrow keys, then the ground moves instead of the player. And if we take this out, then the player moves instead of the ground. Alright, that's it for this tutorial, and I hope to see you in the next one.